Today, we embark on a journey to explore a topic that is both profound and pertinent to our faith, spiritual attacks. As chosen heirs of God's kingdom, we are not exempt from the spiritual battles that rage around us. In fact, as we grow closer to God and walk in His purpose, the enemy often intensifies his efforts to derail us from our divine path. In this session, we will delve into the signs of spiritual attacks and how to overcome them. We'll uncover the subtle tactics of the enemy and learn how to stand firm in our faith amidst adversity. But remember, dear ones, we are not left defenseless in this spiritual warfare. We have been equipped with the armor of God and with his strength, we can emerge victorious in every battle. So I invite you to open your hearts and minds as we explore this crucial aspect of our spiritual journey. Let us not be discouraged by the challenges we face, but rather let us be strengthened by the knowledge that we serve a mighty God who fights on our behalf. Together, let us arm ourselves with the truth and press forward in faith. In the spiritual realm, vigilance is not merely a suggestion, it is a necessity. As we navigate through the complexities of life, we must remain acutely aware of the spiritual battles that surround us. The adversary prowls like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He is cunning, subtle, and relentless in his pursuit to steal, kill, and destroy. Vigilance in spiritual warfare means being alert and discerning, recognizing the enemy's schemes, and standing firm in the truth of God's word. It requires us to be vigilant in prayer, continuously seeking God's guidance and protection. It demands that we guard our hearts and minds against the influences of darkness, filling them instead with the light of Christ. But why is vigilance so crucial? Because the enemy's attacks are often subtle and insidious, disguised as harmless distractions or enticing temptations. Without vigilance, we may fall prey to his deception unaware of the spiritual battles raging around us. Moreover, our vigilance serves not only to protect ourselves, but also to stand in the gap for others. We are called to be watchmen on the wall, interceding for our families, communities, and nations. Our prayers have the power to shift the spiritual atmosphere and thwart the plans of the enemy. Let us not grow complacent or weary in our vigilance. Let us remain steadfast knowing that our victory is assured in Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters, as we gather together in this sacred space of spiritual reflection and guidance, let us first acknowledge who we are in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. We are not merely wandering souls adrift in the vastness of this world. Rather, we are chosen children of God called by name and destined for a purpose far greater than we can imagine. Before the foundations of the earth were laid, God set his affection upon us, choosing us to be his own. We are not defined by our past mistakes or shortcomings, but by the unfathomable love and grace of our Creator. He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, adopting us into his royal family as heirs of his kingdom. As chosen children of God, we are called to live lives that reflect His glory and honor His name. We are called to walk in obedience to His word, to love one another as He has loved us, and to proclaim the good news of salvation to a lost and broken world. In the midst of life's trials and tribulations, let us never forget our identity as chosen children of God. We are not alone in our struggles. We have a loving Father who promises to never leave us nor forsake us. He has equipped us with everything we need to live victoriously in this world, and His Spirit dwells within us, empowering us to overcome every obstacle that we may face. Let us embrace our identity as chosen children of God with humility and gratitude, knowing that we are dearly loved and deeply cherished by our Heavenly Father. One of the subtle yet significant signs of a spiritual attack is the emergence of a nonchalant attitude towards spiritual matters. When we find ourselves becoming indifferent or apathetic towards our faith, it can be a telltale sign that the enemy is at work. Instead of being eager to seek God's presence and deepen our relationship with Him, we may begin to approach spiritual disciplines such as prayer, worship, and studying the scriptures with a sense of complacency. 
our hearts may grow cold, and our passion for God's truth may wane. This nonchalant attitude can manifest in various ways, such as neglecting regular times of prayer and meditation, skipping church gatherings, or minimizing the importance of spiritual growth in our lives. We may find ourselves prioritizing worldly pursuits and pleasures over our pursuit of God. It's essential to recognize this sign of spiritual attack and address it promptly. We must guard our hearts against the subtle lies of the enemy and renew our commitment to seeking God wholeheartedly. By cultivating a fervent love for God and His Word, we can overcome the spirit of indifference and walk in the fullness of His presence. Another telltale sign of a spiritual attack is experiencing a lack of resources. While this may initially manifest in tangible forms such as financial struggles or material scarcity, it can also extend to other areas of our lives, including emotional, relational and spiritual resources. In the natural realm, we may find ourselves facing unexpected financial setbacks, job loss or difficulty meeting our basic needs. These challenges can leave us feeling overwhelmed and helpless, leading to feelings of anxiety, fear and doubt. Additionally, in the spiritual realm, we may encounter a depletion of our emotional and spiritual resources. We may feel spiritually drained, lacking the strength and vitality to persevere in our faith journey. Our prayer life may become dry and ineffective, and we may struggle to find the motivation to engage in spiritual disciplines. It's essential to recognize that these challenges are not merely coincidences, but may be orchestrated by the enemy to hinder our spiritual growth and undermine our trust in God's provision. However, as children of God, we have access to abundant resources through His grace and power. In times of lack, let us turn to God in prayer, trusting in His faithfulness to supply all our needs according to His riches in glory. Let us also seek support from our spiritual community, knowing that we are not alone in our struggles. By leaning on God's strength and the support of others, we can overcome the spirit of lack and experience the fullness of His provision in every area of our lives. Physical fatigue can often be a sign of a spiritual attack, especially when it seems disproportionate to our activities or circumstances. While exhaustion can result from physical exertion or lack of sleep, persistent and unexplained fatigue that lingers despite adequate rest and self-care may indicate a deeper spiritual battle. The enemy often seeks to wear us down physically as a means of weakening our defenses and hindering our effectiveness in God's kingdom. This can manifest in various ways such as feeling constantly drained of energy, experiencing unexplained aches and pains, or struggling with chronic health issues. Physical fatigue may also affect our mental and emotional well-being, leading to increased irritability, mood swings and difficulty concentrating. It can impair our ability to fulfill our responsibilities and engage in meaningful relationships, leaving us feeling overwhelmed and defeated. In times of physical fatigue, it's essential to discern whether it is a natural consequence of our circumstances or a spiritual attack orchestrated by the enemy. By seeking God's wisdom and guidance through prayer and meditation on His Word, we can gain clarity and insight into the source of our exhaustion. Additionally, we can take practical steps to address physical fatigue, such as prioritizing rest and relaxation, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and seeking medical advice if necessary. By caring for our bodies and nourishing our souls, we can combat the spirit of fatigue and experience renewed strength and vitality in Christ. A weak prayer life can serve as a significant indicator of a spiritual attack. Prayer is our direct line of communication with God, and when it becomes feeble or inconsistent, it can signify a disruption in our spiritual connection. In a spiritual attack, we may find ourselves struggling to maintain a regular prayer routine. Our prayers may become shallow, repetitive, or devoid of passion and sincerity. We may feel distant from God, as if our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling and going unheard. Additionally, distractions and hindrances may arise during prayer, making it difficult to focus or concentrate. Negative thoughts, doubts, and worries 
may flood our minds, preventing us from fully engaging in meaningful communication with God. The enemy often targets our prayer life because he knows that it is a source of strength and intimacy with God. By weakening our prayer life, he seeks to isolate us from God's presence and hinder our ability to receive his guidance, protection and provision. If you find yourself experiencing a weak prayer life, it's essential to recognize it as a potential sign of a spiritual attack and take proactive steps to address it. Begin by acknowledging the importance of prayer in your spiritual journey and recommitting yourself to a consistent prayer routine. Seek out opportunities for solitude and silence, where you can commune with God free from distractions. Be honest and transparent in your prayers, pouring out your heart before Him and inviting His presence to fill you anew. Engage in spiritual disciplines such as fasting, meditation and worship to deepen your connection with God and strengthen your prayer life. Surround yourself with supportive believers who can encourage and uplift you in your journey of faith. Remember that prayer is not just a ritual or obligation, but a sacred privilege and a powerful weapon against the schemes of the enemy. As you cultivate a vibrant and fervent prayer life, you will experience renewed intimacy with God and victory over spiritual attacks. Feeling overwhelmed is a common sign of a spiritual attack, often orchestrated by the enemy to distract and discourage us from our purpose and calling in Christ. When we are overwhelmed, it can seem as though the weight of the world is pressing down upon us, leaving us feeling helpless and exhausted. The enemy may use various tactics to induce feelings of overwhelm, such as bombarding us with negative thoughts and emotions, magnifying our problems and difficulties, or creating chaos and confusion in our lives. These attacks can leave us feeling paralyzed, unable to move forward or make decisions with clarity and confidence. Moreover, feeling overwhelmed can lead to a sense of hopelessness and despair, causing us to question God's goodness and sovereignty in the midst of our trials. We may feel tempted to give up on our faith or abandon our God-given dreams and aspirations. It's essential to recognize these feelings of overwhelm as a potential sign of a spiritual attack and take proactive steps to combat them. Begin by acknowledging your feelings and bringing them before God in prayer. Pour out your heart to Him, expressing your fears, doubts and anxieties and invite His peace to fill you anew. Seek refuge in God's Word, meditating on His promises and truths that remind you of His faithfulness and power to overcome every obstacle. Surround yourself with supportive believers who can encourage and uplift you in your time of need, providing practical assistance and spiritual guidance. Remember that you are not alone in your struggles. God is with you always, ready to strengthen and sustain you in the midst of life's storms. By leaning on His strength and trusting in His unfailing love, you can overcome feelings of overwhelm and walk in victory as a child of God. The resurrection of old habits is another unmistakable sign of a spiritual attack. Just as a defeated foe may rise again to challenge us, old habits that we thought were overcome or conquered may resurface with renewed vigor, seeking to ensnare us once more. These old habits could be anything that once held power over us, whether it's an addiction, destructive behavior, unhealthy relationships, or patterns of thought that lead us away from God's truth. The enemy knows our weaknesses and vulnerabilities and will exploit them to draw us back into bondage. When old habits resurface, they often come with a sense of familiarity and comfort, making them all the more tempting to indulge in. We may find ourselves rationalizing or justifying our actions, convincing ourselves that just this once won't hurt or that we have everything under control. However, these old habits are like chains that bind us, preventing us from experiencing the freedom and abundant life that God desires for us. They hinder our spiritual growth and intimacy with God, keeping us trapped in cycles of shame, guilt and regret. If you find yourself experiencing the resurrection of old habits, it's essential to recognize it as a spiritual attack and take decisive action to break free from their grip. Turn to God in prayer, 
confessing your struggles and asking for his strength and guidance to overcome them. Seek accountability and support from trusted friends, mentors, or members of your spiritual community who can walk alongside you in your journey of transformation. Replace old habits with new life-giving behaviors and patterns that align with God's will and lead to spiritual growth and maturity. Remember that victory over old habits is possible through the power of Christ living within you. As you surrender your struggles to Him and trust in His grace and mercy, He will enable you to overcome every obstacle and walk in the freedom and victory that He has promised. Distancing from godly relationships is a poignant sign of a spiritual attack. When we begin to withdraw from the support and fellowship of other believers, it can indicate a weakening of our spiritual defenses and susceptibility to the enemy's schemes. Godly relationships play a crucial role in our spiritual journey, providing encouragement, accountability, and mutual edification. When we isolate ourselves from these relationships, we become more vulnerable to the enemy's attacks, as there is safety and strength in unity. The enemy may use various tactics to drive a wedge between us and our godly relationships. He may sow seeds of discord, bitterness, or unforgiveness, causing rifts and division within our community. He may also tempt us with the allure of worldly friendships or associations that lead us away from God's truth and standards. Moreover, distancing from godly relationships can lead to spiritual stagnation and decline. Without the encouragement and support of fellow believers, we may struggle to persevere in our faith journey and withstand the pressures and temptations of the world. If you find yourself drifting away from godly relationships, it's essential to recognize it as a potential sign of a spiritual attack and take proactive steps to address it. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ, expressing your desire to reconnect and deepen your fellowship with them. Be willing to humbly confess any offenses or misunderstandings and seek reconciliation and restoration in your relationships. Prioritize regular attendance at church gatherings, small group meetings or other Christian events where you can fellowship with other believers and grow in your faith together. Above all, guard your heart against the enemy's attempts to isolate you from godly relationships and community. Surround yourself with people who will uplift and encourage you in your walk with Christ and be a source of encouragement and support to others as well. In the unity of the body of Christ, we find strength, protection and spiritual growth. Struggling to fulfill God's calling can be a profound sign of a spiritual attack. When we encounter obstacles, resistance or persistent challenges in pursuing the purpose and destiny that God has ordained for our lives, it may indicate that we are facing opposition from the enemy. God's calling on our lives is a sacred and significant aspect of our identity as believers. It is the unique mission and assignment that he has entrusted to us, designed to bring glory to his name and advance his kingdom on earth. However, the enemy seeks to thwart God's purposes and hinder us from fulfilling our calling. The enemy may use various tactics to derail us from God's calling, such as doubt, fear, insecurity or discouragement. He may whisper lies and negative thoughts into our minds, causing us to question our worthiness or ability to fulfill God's plan for our lives. He may also create external obstacles or opposition that seem insurmountable, leading us to doubt God's faithfulness and provision. Moreover, the enemy may attempt to distract us with counterfeit pursuits or ambitions that divert our attention away from God's calling. He may tempt us with worldly success, fame or recognition, luring us away from the path of obedience and surrender to God's will. If you find yourself struggling to fulfill God's calling, it's essential to recognize it as a spiritual attack and seek discernment and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer, seeking God's wisdom and direction for your life and asking Him to reveal any areas where you may be under attack. Seek counsel and encouragement from trusted spiritual mentors, pastors or fellow believers who can provide support and accountability in your journey of obedience to God's calling. 
Be willing to surrender your fears, doubts, and insecurities to God, trusting in His strength and faithfulness to equip you for every good work that He has prepared in advance for you to do. Above all, persevere in faith and obedience, knowing that God is faithful to complete the work He has begun in you. By trusting in His promises and relying on His power, you can overcome every obstacle and fulfill the calling that He has placed on your life. Experiencing ungodly dreams and visions can be a deeply unsettling sign of a spiritual attack. Dreams and visions are powerful manifestations of the spiritual realm, and when they veer away from God's truth and principles, it may indicate the influence of dark forces seeking to deceive and disturb us. In the Bible, dreams and visions are often used by God to communicate His will and purposes to His people. However, the enemy can also use these spiritual experiences to plant seeds of fear, confusion and deception in our minds. Ungodly dreams and visions may take various forms, such as nightmares, disturbing imagery, or messages that contradict God's word and character. They may leave us feeling fearful, anxious or spiritually unsettled upon waking, disrupting our peace and sense of security. Moreover, Ungodly dreams and visions may contain elements of temptation, lust, or spiritual bondage, leading us away from God's truth and righteousness. They may stir up feelings of guilt, shame, or condemnation, causing us to doubt our identity and relationship with God. If you find yourself experiencing ungodly dreams and visions, it's essential to discern their origin and significance through prayer and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Seek God's wisdom and discernment to interpret the meaning behind these experiences, asking Him to reveal any spiritual attacks or influences at work. Guard your heart and mind against the enemy's attempts to sow seeds of fear, doubt or confusion through ungodly dreams and visions. Fill your mind with the truth of God's word and promises, meditating on His goodness, love and faithfulness. Pray for protection and deliverance from the enemy's schemes, asking God to shield you from spiritual attacks and to grant you discernment to recognize and resist the works of darkness. Surround yourself with godly influences and support, seeking accountability and prayer from trusted believers who can stand with you in spiritual warfare. Remember that God is greater than any spiritual attack or deception that may come against you. By relying on His strength, and trusting in His Word, you can overcome ungodly dreams and visions and walk in the freedom and victory that Christ has won for you. Understanding the tactics of the enemy is essential in spiritual warfare as it enables us to recognize and counteract his schemes effectively. The devil, our adversary, employs various strategies to attack believers and undermine their faith. Let's delve into some of these tactics. First, deception. The devil is the father of lies and deception is one of his primary weapons. He distorts truth, manipulates perceptions, and blinds people to God's reality. Through deception, he leads believers astray, causing them to doubt God's word and question his character. Second, temptation. Another tactic of the enemy is to tempt believers with sinful desires and pleasures. He preys on our weaknesses and vulnerabilities, enticing us to indulge in worldly pursuits and disobedience to God's will. Temptation often leads to sin, separating us from God and damaging our relationship with Him. Third, division. The devil seeks to sow seeds of discord and division among believers, causing strife, conflict and disunity within the body of Christ. He fosters bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, hindering our ability to love one another and fulfill God's command to live in harmony. Fourth, distraction. The enemy employs distraction to divert believers' attention away from God's purposes and priorities. He inundates us with busyness, cares of this world, and trivial concerns, preventing us from focusing on spiritual growth and intimacy with God. Fifth, doubt and fear. Satan seeks to instill doubt and fear in believers, undermining their confidence in God's promises and provision. 
He magnifies uncertainties, anxieties and insecurities, leading us to question God's faithfulness and sovereignty. Sixth, discouragement. The devil aims to discourage believers by magnifying failures, setbacks and disappointments. He whispers lies of defeat and hopelessness, convincing us that our efforts are futile and that God has abandoned us. Seventh, pride. Pride is a subtle yet powerful tactic of the enemy, leading believers to rely on their own strength and wisdom rather than God's. The devil inflates our ego, fostering arrogance, self-righteousness and independence from God. By understanding these tactics, we can guard ourselves against the schemes of the enemy and stand firm in our faith. Let us remain vigilant, clothed in the armor of God and equipped with the truth of his word to resist the devil's attacks and experience victory in Christ. Highlighting the importance of recognizing the tactics of the enemy is crucial in spiritual warfare, as it empowers believers to effectively combat his schemes and stand firm in their faith. Let's explore why recognizing these tactics is essential. First, awareness. Recognizing the tactics of the enemy increases our awareness of his presence and activity in our lives. By being alert to his strategies, we can discern when we are under attack and take proactive steps to resist him. Second, vigilance. Understanding the tactics of the enemy enables us to remain vigilant and watchful, guarding against his subtle attacks and deception. We are less likely to be caught off guard or deceived when we are aware of his schemes. Third, protection. Recognizing the tactics of the enemy provides us with spiritual protection and armor against his assaults. We can put on the full armor of God, as described in Ephesians 6, and stand firm against the devil's schemes. Fourth, discernment. Discernment is essential in distinguishing between God's truth and the lies of the enemy. By recognizing his tactics, we can test every spirit and thought against the truth of God's word, ensuring that we are not led astray. Fifth, resistance. Armed with the knowledge of the enemy's tactics, we can resist him with confidence and authority in the name of Jesus. We can reject his lies, resist temptation, and overcome his attacks through the power of the Holy Spirit. Sixth, victory. Ultimately, recognizing the tactics of the enemy leads to victory in spiritual warfare. We can overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, knowing that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. In conclusion, recognizing the tactics of the enemy is essential for believers to navigate the spiritual battles they face. By increasing awareness, remaining vigilant and putting on the armor of God, we can stand firm against the devil's schemes and experience victory in Christ. Throughout the Bible, numerous passages illustrate the reality of spiritual battles and provide insights into how we can combat the schemes of the enemy. Here are some key biblical references that highlight spiritual warfare. First, Ephesians 6.10, 18. This passage famously describes the armor of God, which believers are instructed to put on to stand against the devil's schemes. It emphasizes the need for spiritual readiness and the importance of using God's truth, righteousness, faith, salvation, and the word of God as weapons in spiritual warfare. Second, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5. In this passage, Paul discusses the nature of spiritual warfare and the weapons believers have to demolish strongholds and take every thought captive to obey Christ. It underscores the power of God to overcome spiritual forces and bring about spiritual victory. Third, James 4, 7. James exhorts believers to submit to God and resist the devil, knowing that he will flee from them. This verse emphasizes the importance of standing firm in faith and resisting the enemy's attacks through the strength and authority found in Christ. Fourth, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. Peter warns believers to be sober-minded and watchful because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He encourages them to resist the devil, standing firm in their faith, knowing that they are not alone in their struggles. Fifth, 
Matthew 4, 1, 11. In this passage, Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Through his responses, Jesus demonstrates how believers can overcome temptation by relying on the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Sixth, Luke 10, 17, 20. Jesus sends out 72 disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God, and they return rejoicing that even the demons are subject to them in his name. This passage illustrates the authority believers have in Christ to overcome spiritual forces and advance God's kingdom. These biblical references serve as reminders of the reality of spiritual warfare and provide guidance on how believers can effectively engage in the battle against the enemy. By putting on the armor of God, resisting temptation, standing firm in faith, and relying on the power of God's word and spirit, believers can experience victory over the schemes of the enemy. Overcoming spiritual attacks begins with a profound return to the arms of our Heavenly Father. This return is not merely a physical act, but a deep spiritual realignment, a surrender of our hearts, minds and wills to the loving embrace of God. It entails recognizing the areas where we have drifted away from His presence or allowed sin to create distance between us and Him. This act of returning requires humility, repentance, and a genuine desire to be reconciled with God. It involves confessing our shortcomings, acknowledging our need for His forgiveness, and choosing to turn away from anything that hinders our relationship with Him. It's a reorientation of our priorities, putting God back at the center of our lives, and seeking His will above all else. Returning to God also involves a commitment to seek Him wholeheartedly, to prioritize prayer, worship, and the study of His Word. It's about cultivating intimacy with Him, longing to know Him more deeply, and to experience His presence in our lives in a tangible way. As we return to God, we open ourselves up to His transforming power and grace, we allow Him to heal our brokenness, restore our passion for Him, and equip us to face the spiritual battles that lie ahead. In His presence, we find strength, peace, and the assurance that we are never alone in our struggles. So, if you're experiencing a spiritual attack, I urge you to return to God today. Open your heart to Him, confess your sins, and invite Him to reignite the flame of your love for Him. As you do, you'll find that His presence is the ultimate source of protection, peace, and victory in the face of any spiritual assault. Seeking support from the church and godly relationships is a vital aspect of overcoming spiritual attacks. God has designed us to thrive in community, and when we face spiritual battles, we need the strength and encouragement that comes from walking alongside fellow believers. The church is not just a building or an institution, it is the body of Christ, a family of believers united by our shared faith in Jesus. When we gather together in fellowship, worship and prayer, we are strengthened and equipped to face the challenges of life, including spiritual attacks. In times of spiritual warfare, it's essential to surround ourselves with godly relationships, friends, mentors, and spiritual leaders who can offer support, accountability, and prayer. These relationships provide a safe space where we can be vulnerable, transparent, and encouraged in our faith journey. When we share our struggles with trusted brothers and sisters in Christ, we allow them to bear our burdens and intercede on our behalf. Their prayers and words of wisdom can bring comfort, guidance, and perspective in the midst of spiritual battles. Moreover, being connected to the body of Christ allows us to draw upon the diverse gifts and strengths of fellow believers. We can learn from their experiences, receive counsel and encouragement, and be challenged to grow in our faith and obedience to God. If you're facing a spiritual attack, don't isolate yourself from the support and fellowship of the church and godly relationships. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ, share your burdens with them, and allow them to walk alongside you in prayer and encouragement. Attend church services, small group gatherings, 
and other Christian events where you can connect with fellow believers and experience the power of corporate worship and prayer. Invest in deepening your relationships with those who share your faith and be willing to offer support and encouragement to others in their time of need. Remember that we are stronger together than we are alone. By seeking support from the church and godly relationships, you'll find strength, encouragement and the assurance that you are not alone in your spiritual battles. Submitting to spiritual authority is a crucial step in overcoming spiritual attacks. God has established spiritual leaders within the church to provide guidance, protection and accountability for his people. When we submit to their authority, we open ourselves up to the covering and wisdom that God has provided for our spiritual well-being. Spiritual authority is not about control or manipulation, but about servant leadership and shepherding God's flock. Spiritual leaders are called to watch over the souls entrusted to their care, to lead by example, and to equip believers for the work of ministry. When we submit to spiritual authority, we acknowledge that we are not meant to navigate the spiritual journey alone. We recognize the need for guidance and accountability as we seek to live in obedience to God's word and fulfill his purposes for our lives. Submitting to spiritual authority involves respecting and honoring our spiritual leaders, recognizing the authority that God has entrusted to them. It means being willing to receive correction instruction and counsel from those who are called to shepherd and oversee our spiritual growth. Moreover, submitting to spiritual authority requires humility and a willingness to yield our own desires and agendas to God's will as communicated through his appointed leaders. It means trusting that God is working through them for our good and his glory, even when their decisions or directives may not align with our preferences. If you're facing a spiritual attack, I encourage you to submit to the spiritual authority that God has placed in your life. Seek counsel and guidance from your pastors, elders, or other spiritual leaders, trusting that they have your best interests at heart. Be willing to humble yourself before God and submit to His will, even when it may be difficult or uncomfortable. As you align yourself with God's ordained authority structures, you'll find protection guidance and strength to overcome the spiritual attacks that come your way. Controlling desires and staying spiritually alert are essential strategies for overcoming spiritual attacks. The enemy often targets our desires, seeking to lure us away from God's will and into sin and disobedience. By exercising self-control and remaining spiritually vigilant, we can resist his schemes and walk in victory. Controlling desires begins with understanding that our natural inclinations are often at odds with God's purposes for our lives. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans 7, 21, 23, that there is a constant battle between the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. However, through the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, we can overcome the cravings of our sinful nature and live in obedience to God's word. Staying spiritually alert requires vigilance and discernment, being aware of the enemy's tactics and actively resisting his attempts to deceive and derail us. It involves guarding our hearts and minds against worldly influences and temptations, filling them instead with the truth and promises of God's word. Practical steps for controlling desires and staying spiritually alert include, first, Renewing our minds, meditating on God's Word and allowing it to shape our thoughts, attitudes and desires. Second, praying without ceasing, maintaining a constant posture of prayer, seeking God's strength and guidance in every area of our lives. Third, fleeing temptation, avoiding situations and environments that may lead us into temptation and instead pursuing righteousness and holiness. Fourth, seeking accountability, Surrounding ourselves with godly friends and mentors who can provide support, encouragement, and accountability in our spiritual journey. Fifth, putting on the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 18 reminds us to put on the full armor of God, including the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, 
the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. By controlling our desires and staying spiritually alert, we can resist the enemy's attacks and stand firm in our faith. As we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and the resources that God has provided, we can overcome every obstacle and experience victory in Christ. Immersing ourselves in the Word of God is a powerful strategy for overcoming spiritual attacks. The Bible is not just a book, it is the living and active Word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword, capable of penetrating to the deepest parts of our souls and exposing the lies and deceptions of the enemy. When we immerse ourselves in God's Word, we are filling our minds and hearts with truth, wisdom and encouragement. The scriptures are a source of strength, guidance and assurance, providing us with the tools we need to stand firm against the attacks of the enemy. The Word of God is like a spiritual weapon in our hands, enabling us to wage war against the forces of darkness. When we face spiritual battles, we can wield the promises, principles and truths found in scripture to overcome every obstacle and challenge that comes our way. Moreover, Immersing ourselves in the Word of God helps to renew our minds and transform our thinking. It enables us to discern between truth and falsehood, righteousness and sin, light and darkness. As we meditate on God's Word day and night, we are empowered to resist the lies and temptations of the enemy and to walk in obedience to God's will. If you're facing a spiritual attack, Make it a priority to immerse yourself in the Word of God. Spend time reading, studying, and meditating on Scripture, allowing God to speak to you through His written Word. Memorize key verses that speak to your situation and declare them aloud in faith when you're feeling overwhelmed or under attack. In addition to personal study, seek out opportunities to hear God's Word preached and taught in the context of your church community. Attend services, Bible studies and other Christian gatherings where you can receive the encouragement and instruction you need to stand firm in your faith. By immersing yourself in the Word of God, you'll find strength, courage and wisdom to overcome every spiritual attack that comes your way. As you hide God's Word in your heart and apply it to your life, you'll experience the transforming power of His truth and the victory that comes from walking in obedience to Him. Engaging in fervent prayer is a foundational strategy for overcoming spiritual attacks. Prayer is our direct line of communication with God, our source of strength, guidance and protection in the face of adversity. When we face spiritual battles, prayer is our most potent weapon enabling us to access the power and resources of heaven to overcome the schemes of the enemy. Fervent prayer is not just a casual conversation with God, but a passionate, earnest and persistent pursuit of His presence and intervention in our lives. It involves pouring out our hearts before God, expressing our deepest desires, fears and struggles, and seeking His will and provision in every situation. When we engage in fervent prayer, we are aligning our hearts with God's purposes and inviting His kingdom to come and His will to be done in our lives and circumstances. We are acknowledging our dependence on Him and trusting in His faithfulness and sovereignty to work all things together for our good. Moreover, fervent prayer is an act of spiritual warfare as we stand in the gap for ourselves, our loved ones and the world around us. We can pray against the attacks of the enemy binding His influence and releasing God's power and protection over our lives and those we care about. If you're facing a spiritual attack, make fervent prayer a priority in your life. Set aside dedicated time each day to seek God's face in prayer, whether it's in the quiet of your own home, in your prayer closet, or with other believers in corporate prayer settings. Pray boldly and specifically, declaring God's promises and speaking His truth over your life and circumstances. Use the authority given to you as a child of God to rebuke the attacks of the enemy and to command him to flee in the name of Jesus. Don't underestimate the power of fervent prayer to overcome spiritual attacks. As you persist in prayer, 
Trusting in God's faithfulness and power, you'll experience His presence, peace, and victory in every area of your life. Now let's engage in a guided prayer together. As we engage in this guided prayer session, I encourage each of you to actively participate and engage with God in prayer. Prayer is not merely a passive activity, but a powerful and transformative dialogue with our Heavenly Father. As we lift our voices together in prayer, let us approach God with expectancy and faith, believing that He hears our prayers and delights in answering them according to His perfect will. I invite you to join me in praying out loud, declaring your own personal prayers and petitions before the Lord. Don't be afraid to pour out your heart before Him, expressing your deepest desires, fears, and struggles. He longs to hear from you and to meet you in the place of prayer. If you feel led, you can also pray for the needs of others in the group or for specific requests that have been shared. Let's intercede on behalf of one another, lifting up our brothers and sisters in Christ and standing in agreement for God's provision, protection and breakthrough in their lives. As we pray together, let's also listen attentively to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He may lead us to pray for specific situations or individuals, or He may bring to mind scriptures or promises that we can declare in faith. Remember that prayer is a powerful spiritual weapon, and as we unite our hearts and voices in prayer, we can push back the forces of darkness and advance the kingdom of God in our lives and in the world around us. So let's not hold back in our prayers, but let's press in with boldness and confidence, knowing that our prayers have the power to move mountains and to bring about miraculous breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Let's begin our time of prayer together now, lifting up our voices to the Lord and seeking His face with all our hearts. Amen. Let us begin by quieting our minds and focusing our attention on the Lord. Take a deep breath and release any tension or distractions. Allow yourself to be fully present in this moment, aware of God's love and grace surrounding you. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging our need for your deliverance and empowerment. We recognize that we are in a spiritual battle and we cannot overcome it in our own strength. But we know that with you, all things are possible. Lord, we confess any sins or shortcomings that may have opened the door to spiritual attacks in our lives. We ask for your forgiveness and cleansing, washing us clean by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We declare your victory over every scheme and tactic of the enemy. You are our refuge and our fortress, our strong tower in times of trouble. We take shelter under the shadow of your wings, knowing that you are our ever-present help in times of need. Lord, we pray for deliverance from every bondage, stronghold and oppression that seeks to hold us captive. Set us free, O God, from fear, anxiety, doubt and any other form of spiritual attack that may be hindering us from walking in the fullness of your joy and peace. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, empowering us to stand firm in faith, to resist the enemy, and to walk in victory in every area of our lives. Clothe us with your armor, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Lord, we surrender every area of our lives to your sovereign rule and authority. Take control, O God, and lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Fill us with your wisdom and discernment, that we may recognize the schemes of the enemy and overcome them by the power of your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and goodness towards us. We trust in your promises, knowing that you are faithful to complete the work you have begun in us. May your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives and in the lives of those around us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen. Take a moment to continue in silent prayer, surrendering any additional burdens or concerns to the Lord. Let his peace fill your heart as you rest in his presence. Amen. I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us in this spiritual guidance session. Your presence here today is a testament to your commitment to growing in your faith 
and overcoming the challenges of spiritual warfare. Thank you for allowing us to journey alongside you in this pursuit of spiritual victory. As we bring this session to a close, I want to leave you with words of encouragement and blessing. Remember that you are loved and cherished by a Heavenly Father who is always with you, guiding, protecting, and empowering you every step of the way. No matter what trials or tribulations you may face, know that you are never alone, and God is faithful to see you through to victory. May His peace, joy, and strength fill your hearts abundantly as you continue to walk in faith and obedience to His will. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together in this time of spiritual guidance and fellowship. We thank you for the wisdom and insight you have imparted to us through your word and through the encouragement of one another. As we go forth from this place, Lord, we ask for your continued guidance, protection, and provision in our lives. Strengthen us, O God, to stand firm in our faith, to resist the attacks of the enemy, and to walk in the victory that is ours in Christ Jesus. May your presence go with us, Lord, and may your peace reign in our hearts always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Throughout this video, we've explored the signs of spiritual attacks and practical strategies for overcoming them. We've discussed the importance of vigilance in spiritual warfare, recognizing the tactics of the enemy, and remaining steadfast in our faith as chosen children of God. We've identified various signs of spiritual attacks, such as a nonchalant attitude towards spiritual matters, lack of resources, physical fatigue, weak prayer life, feeling overwhelmed, resurrection of old habits, distancing from godly relationships, struggling to fulfill God's calling, and experiencing ungodly dreams and visions. Now is the time to take action in your spiritual life. Take a moment to reflect on the signs of spiritual attacks discussed in this video and evaluate your own spiritual health. Are there areas where you've been under attack? Are there areas where you need to strengthen your defenses and draw closer to God? Don't wait until the enemy's attacks have left you wounded and defeated. Take proactive steps today to armor yourself with prayer, immerse yourself in the Word of God, seek support from the Church and godly relationships, and return to God with all your heart. Remember, you are not alone in this battle, and God has equipped you with everything you need to overcome. Finally, I encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others who may benefit from its message. By spreading the word and sharing these resources, you're helping to equip and empower others in their spiritual journey. Together, Let's stand firm in our faith, resist the attacks of the enemy, and walk in the victory that is ours in Christ Jesus. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of spiritual warfare, and may God bless you abundantly as you continue to seek Him with all your heart.